Hi everyone, I'm Paige Abbott and this is your weekly recovery message. This week I thought I would talk about the topic of masturbation. Last week I talked about addiction involving sex and I encouraged people to look at how addiction is manifesting in this realm rather than getting caught up on if addiction is impacting you sexually. Another area that people don't often explore in that sexual realm is sex with self or masturbation. It's something that in society we don't talk a lot about and so I find that a lot of people minimize or rationalize or just don't even think to look at how their addiction may be using masturbation for escape, reward or relief. Yet when you start asking the questions, I start to hear people who are acting out with masturbation anywhere from kind of two to four times per day, all the way up to kind of 10 plus times per day, and describing using it when they're bored, using it for sleep, using it for relaxation, um, or sometimes there's the rationalization that people are young, their sex drives are high, but again, not really looking at what is underlying this and what's going on. Addiction is driven and is rooted in the reward circuitry of the brain. This is the circuitry that controls our basic impetuses for survival. So food, as well as sex, are part of that circuitry. So if we're looking at addiction and recognizing and appreciating that you have it, then again, it's worth looking at how addiction may be driving or influencing some of that sexual behavior. So when we start to look at it that way, it's a little bit harder to just skate by on those excuses of high sex drive or age um, or that it's harmless because it actually may be adding quite a bit of harm to your life. And what does that mean? What can masturbation be doing in terms of harm? Well, it can act very much like a substance or other behaviors. So for people who are acting out with this behavior often or even daily, um, what they will start to report is that there's a lot of isolation there may be a lot of fear of actually engaging in real relationships with people. Often the sexual template has come from exposure to things like pornography and so people intellectually appreciate that's not real and yet when they're starting to look for potential partners that's the template that they're using and so reality falls short and is insufficient. So people find themselves going back to masturbation and pornography in order to find that sexual gratification. There's a lot of time that may be spent kind of thinking, planning, acting out. I've heard people be late for work or commitments because they're busy acting out. People who have found themselves acting out at work or other places where they intellectually recognize it's probably inappropriate um, and yet there's that compulsivity and obsession to do it and to find that relief. So when we start to look at this side of things, um, then we start to see that this may not be as harmless a behavior as we thought and may not be as untouched by addiction as also thought. Also that um, rationalization of being young and having a high sex drive, I've seen people at many ages that when addiction is active, um, yeah, their sex drive is higher, much like cravings. So when people are drinking or acting out with drugs, then their desire for those substances is higher. So sex drive, well, only when you're pulling back on the behavior and engaging in a period of abstinence will you really have an accurate baseline of what your core baseline sex drive is. But I find that once people take that detoxification period and cool off, they will find that their sex drive seems much lower um, because it's actually returned to baseline, which was not as high as they previously thought. I'm talking quite a bit about the more binging acting outside of the spectrum, um, but there is that other side of the spectrum, which is sexual anorexia and avoidance. And that may also be in the realm of masturbation. So this is where addiction and recovery are always interesting conversations. I can't say carte blanche um, that masturbation will be driven by disease and an unhealthy thing for everybody who's watching. There are viewers out there who have been avoiding 
a sexual relationship with others as well as with themselves who may not really understand or connect with what is sexual intimacy for them, what gives them pleasure, what do they need, what do they value, what do they want. And in those cases, sometimes exploring sex with self can be a healthy and safe place to start to find that sexual voice. Now I would say the majority of people fall more on the first side, the binging, acting outside of the spectrum. And so for those individuals where you already are acting out with masturbation, you've had a history with it, then you may want to look at some boundaries with that behavior and even considering a full-on detoxification period to promote withdrawal to allow that brain to settle back to baseline. For those of you on the other end of the sexual spectrum, so the sexual anorexics and avoidance, I would encourage you to talk to your friends, your recovery supports, and trusted healthcare providers who are helping you in your journey um, to talk with them about some healthy and helpful tips moving forward um, to see what can help you to start to explore that sexual realm a little bit more assertively and to find your voice. But again, the, I would echo the message from my last video on addiction involving sex to look at how is addiction impacting this realm of sex with self, not if. Thanks for watching. I wish you all the best in your ongoing journey of recovery. Bye for now.